Hello and welcome to the last part of this tutorial where we're gonna create some decals for the crate. With these decals we can create some more details like some warning signs, some text, some bolts and some lines as detail. This will also add a second material ID and I can easily switch between decals to what I prefer or what fits on the current level of the game. Then in Houdini, if you have the game tools installed, we have a decal node which is called the decal projector. Our first input will be the crate, the second input will be the points and the last input are my textures. So let's create first my texture so I can see what I'm doing when I start placing points. I'm gonna start with a grid and I'm gonna place my texture on it. So I have a texture made here and animate it in such a way that this will perfectly align on a grid. So if I would fill in four rows and four columns, that would perfectly fit on my texture. Then I'm gonna use a UV projection on this node and initialize the projection. Then automatically it would search for the best fit. Then I'm gonna use the quick material and fill in my path to my textures. I can also see that my UV is being reversed, so I will go back to UV projection and rotate my projection. So I can now read the words clearly. Oh, so my grids actually should be 5 by 5 and now you can see that everything has, not everything is aligned along the geometry. Then these lines, I want to delete them, so I'm gonna select them and press delete, also these ones here and then one more thing I'm gonna do here is use the enumerate one node and we have to fill in the name called uh, decal index so basically each primitive has now a number so each primitive has now the decal index number which can be used then later so I'm gonna copy this in here and I'm also gonna scatter some random points for the moment so let's say I want 10 random decals and plug them in here then go into the decal projector and use the placement tab then we're gonna disable the manual workflow and we should see our decals being placed as you can see right now, my decals are way too big and I'm gonna just here place the transform and I might need to scale them and also probably rotate them in the right direction. So you can see that they are now following the shape better. And then one more thing I want to show you about this decal tool is we can specify which decal has, is going to be copied on which model. So we're going to create an attribute and we can basically use this decal index and we can use it here in the point attribute. And if I would change now this decal index from value, we can see that the images are updating to the corresponding index. So of course I'm not going to use a scatter node to place my decals around. I want to build a bit more reliable system that is not that random. So we're going to delete this for the moment. And I'm going to put this a little bit on the side and make some space here. So what I first want to do is, again, I want to split this geometry and again I'm going to use the ID piece. And then I'm going to start with this part first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the bounds of this and I'm going to manually select the top and bottom. Then I'm going to extrude and set it to individual and I'm going to give it the large inset value and disable the sides. So basically I have now points that are somewhere around here in the center 
then I will be fusing these points and I can now bring this here so disable the remove repeated vertex in the fuse and now you should see that we have like procedurally placed these bolts on the sides so if you want another ID index we can do that by changing this number so if you would like like this detail more we can use that what we can also do here is let's say I want to change the scaling of this then we can create another attribute and what I will be doing here is I will name it scale and by default Houdini will recognize this scale name and we're gonna set the scale to a value 3 and when we play around with these values we should see that the scale is updating so then I want to create some more points and I want to place them here on the sides and I will be using a blast node for this and we have stored this in the corner piece attribute and we can see that this is that this is the piece you might need to go back and uh, plug in after the boolean the corner pieces here because during the boolean some of the values are corner piece 0 and some of them have been 1 but they should be all be 1 then once the correct shape is here I'm gonna use bounce here also I'm going to use the transform and I will be using one of my presets it will be center and object so it will automatically fill in these expressions in the pivot and I will be scaling my box in the y-axis to zero then I'm gonna fuse the points and again here I'm gonna copy paste this and I will change the decal number here so it's easy to see then merge these results and plug it in the decal projector so we now have a decal here and again we can easily change the decal so if I would like to have some bolts here I place some bolts and I probably gonna lower the scaling of that for the next decals I want to have some more things going on on the sides and I'm actually gonna place this network here and the reason for this is because I want to build further on uh, these values so I'm gonna use another blast node here I only want to have for example these these two so I'm gonna press enter then I'm gonna uh, go over each primitive so for each primitive so we have two primitives so we're gonna go over this network two times and fuse all the points together of the primitive so I'm gonna so the high value disable to remove repeated vertices and now we should have points that are in the middle of these planes then I'm gonna copy this network again and I'm gonna do this then for uh, the other sides on the z-axis so it's the same system and again we need to copy these attributes and fill them in here So I'm gonna change what's being viewed so I like to use these lines and I probably have to scale this one up something like this what we can also uh, do here is place a transform node so I'm gonna do that for each uh, point so we can move it up or down in unity I can move uh, up or down my uh, decals so they don't all overlap on each other and so on and I have some control on where I want the lines then here for the other points let's use some 
other interesting decal like a uh, name or a number uh, like this thing and I'm going to scale this up and I can also see that it's upside down and you can fix this by having a new attribute that controls the uh, rotation so you can create a new node or you can also add the plus icon here and type in rotation then in the rotation value I want it to be rotated 180 degrees and now it's rotated in this way so you could also add rotation in the other ones so you can have individual controls in the rotation then I can merge this result with my crate then also important we need to assign these decals to the attribute ID piece so I copied this attribute node and we have to say that this in this is part of the first crate so when I will be splitting it up my decals are now also here so in the game engine I rebuilt my crate and you can see that we have now an extra element to add the decals so we can add the decals and we can also see that they might uh, have to move a little bit more to us so let's also adjust this and also if you want to make a decal material this is built-in in Unity so just search for decal and fill in the base color normals and a mask and so on so I'm gonna create a new attribute to put the planes a bit forward and I'm gonna put it after the merge so I don't have to do this individually for each decal and this attribute is then called surface offset and once created we can give it a value and we can see we can push forward the decals so we don't have to do this too much so keep the value low like something like this should normally be fine then what I also need to do is our decals should have a normal then I'm going to switch back to the game engine and we can see that they're not uh, colliding into each other anymore and I'm also going to automatically assign the decal so I'm going to copy the name and I've copied the unity material node and in here I'm going to switch out this material name with my decal name and I'm just going to place it here and let's go back and now all decals are placed automatically so I don't have to do this uh, manual anymore so of course we have some areas that are not properly done and that's because we need to add some controls in this HTA so we can uh, move this decal a little bit up so it actually play is going to be placed better I'm gonna open the property type menu and make a new folder for the decals and place it here and we can also make create some labels so we have decals on the sides we have decals on the corners plus decals on the x-axis and then we have also decals on the z-axis so I know a little bit which one is which so for the decals on the sides which was uh, this one with the bounce so I want to control the scale so I'm gonna copy the scale here and just rename it to scale and I'm also gonna copy paste this value here then also the rotation the decal number and I will also say if we move it up or down and I will be doing this also then for the other network so I can control the decals a bit better in the game engine so now I've created some parameters to use in the game engine and let's test that out so I have now an extra menu for my decals 
now I want to, for example, move this big piece that's not in the grid position. So we can see that it's now being placed way better. Uh, something else that I also want to say is that it doesn't influence the UVs or something. So you can always, after baking, change the decals and where they should be placed. So you can play around with the decals and place them where you want. You can expose more values so it's easier to control. I can, for example, make multiple sheets of decals and I can simply replace them and I get a little bit different look in my crate. And this step can also then be uh, repeated for the, the top part if you also want to have some specific uh, decals or warning signs on the top for example. So I'm gonna quickly create some decals for the top and I'm gonna uh, speed up this part because it's the, a similar approach as the first part. So I set up a small system then here and I'm going to test this then in Unity, rebuild the asset. And we now have some bolts here and this warning sign. And I've also added some uh, folders here so we don't have to scroll through a big list. So if I want the bolts to be bigger, I can do that here. To then finally use this in the game engine, we can just simply click the big prefab button. So once I'm clicking this, it will automatically show up in this menu and it's saved under the asset Houdini engine cache in the baked folder and then the create generator. And it created a prefab folder as you can see here. Then move this in the folder where your project is. Also beware that you save your textures because right now if I make a change it's going to overwrite this normal map so be careful with that when you make a new model to make sure you change some namings of the baker. That was it for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.